Hi there and welcome to another Velonomad.com video review. Today we're reviewing the Cyclone Aero Comfort Plus bike bag. Big thanks to Cyclone for sending this out from Italy to review. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to try and keep this under 10 minutes, but there's a lot to cover, so I might struggle. Uh, with bike bags, there's a lot I look at, or there are, there are a lot of characteristics I look at in order to determine where a bike bag fits in into the sphere or that the, the universe of bike bags. There's agility, how easy it is to, to, to maneuver around airports, particularly, which is very important. You know, you don't want something that you have to really lug around and struggle with, something that's quite bulky, you just want it to move with you and not be a hassle. Uh, we'll talk about the compactability of the bike bag, and by that I mean how well it packs down into a small package. Uh, you don't want something that you have to leave behind at a camper van depot, I guess like a bike box, because that's a bit of a pain. Um, or that something's going to take up a lot of room in a hotel room, or in a, or in a hire car particularly. You know, with a camper van you've got a little bit more room, obviously. Uh, we'll talk about the weight. Very important these days with airlines cracking down on baggage allowance, you know, gone are the days where you take 2 times 20 kilos overseas. Uh, if you can save 5 or 6 or 7 kilos in a bike bag, to me that's a, that's a big saving and a big, big plus. Uh, we'll talk about price. Uh, to me it's not a deal breaker, I'd rather spend a little bit more, you know, a couple hundred dollars on something that's going to do a really, really good job and really last a long time rather than skimp a little bit and expose my bike to poten potential damage. Now obviously the more expensive your bike is, the more sensitive you are to the quality of the bike bag and how robust and you know how well it protects the bike bag. Next up we'll talk about uh, the overall um, robustness and longevity of the bike bag and that, that kind of results from the quality of the, the materials used, the, uh, the overall um, design of it uh, and things like zips and straps and things like that. There's quite a few things for me to talk about with this bike bag. I'll also talk about how easy it is to get the bike in and out, which is, I guess, pretty important if you're going on a short domestic flight uh, for a weekend or something like that. You don't want to spend you know, ages and ages getting your bike bag packed up. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? Also the, um, also, the adjustability of the bike bag, you know, what the different size bikes you can fit in. Okay, first up, we will talk about the agility. This bike bag absolutely kicks butt in that regard. It's got four casters on the bottom, so it just turns on a dime. I've travelled with one of these overseas. 2009, moving through airports in transit was an absolute breeze with this thing. You can stick, there's a strap on the front which I'll talk about in a second. So you, you know, you pull from the front. That's the primary point. You can push it from the back. You can control it from the top. It's just awesome in that regard. I, you know, I couldn't speak highly enough of it uh, in, in terms of for that characteristic. Next up is the compactability. Uh, because it's quite a soft bag, there's there's an internal metal frame and an arm. Uh, which all collapse down. So this bike bag packs down quite well. It ships with this bag. So it's not a struggle to get down. You just roll it up basically, pop it in the bag and, and that's it. So you don't have to spend ages trying to wrangle it into the bag. It's really, really good in that regard. Uh, also, with the weight, it's only about five or six, no, maybe six or seven kilos. So it's very, very light compared to other bike bags. So other bike bags you can expect to weigh between say nine and 15, 16 kilos. So for me, that's a big, big plus for the bike bag. It's 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 fantastic in that regard. The price, uh, it's not cheap. It's five hundred and fifty Australian dollars or so, probably a little bit more. Um, actually, that's the online price. So certainly not. It's not the most expensive, but it's it's quite quite high up there compared to some of the other bike bags, which are around say between hundred or three hundred dollars. <coughs> excuse me, something like that. So yeah, it's quite expensive on an absolute basis. Uh, in terms of the, what are we going to talk about next? We'll talk about the um, base, I think. So, this is one of the, the areas that I think needs to be fixed. Uh, I'll reference my friend Craig quite a lot because he's travelled overseas on one of these bike bags a fair few times, so and he's he's very uh, very well informed with with things like this. Uh, and also the some of the some of the things I'll say come from reports from other people I know who've also travelled with this bike bag. These casters go missing. Now Craig's very fastidious, he tightens his up before every trip. Uh, he's had a caster go missing. I've had one of mine come very loose. Uh, I've heard other people tell me they've just go AWOL to me on a on a bike bag that's five hundred and fifty or six hundred dollars. That's not acceptable, that needs to be looked at. They attach the internal metal frame. Uh, I don't know what the solution is, but like I said, that's not good enough. Uh, the, the bottom material, or the, the base, is just the same material as the bike bag. It's quite thin. Uh, for me, that's a bit of an issue. It's quite exposed down there. If you tear that and you've got things in your bike bag, probably kiss them goodbye. Simple fix for that is making that like a rubber bash guard or, or plastic on internally, but rubber bash guard on top of the material to me is a better solution. It makes it much more hardy and robust and you, you can worry a lot less. 
like I said, quite exposed down to the steps and knocks and things like that. So that's a small fix that will contribute to an overall lifting in the quality of the bike bag. I'll tip it back up. The strap I mentioned before that you steer it with, again, uh, this is based on, on real world experience. These are plastic, the clip's plastic and the D or the I-ring's plastic, they break. Uh, for me, a simple fix would be to make those uh, aluminium or, or equivalent. That would again contribute to an overall lifting the quality of the strap. On, again, on, a, on, expensive, on a $500 or $600 bike bag, for those to break, not good enough. Okay, the zips. Also, I think the zips need looking at. There are two zippers. They're quite small gauge. Uh, Craig said to me he doesn't think it's a problem. I think it is. On a bike bag, you want quite big gauge or big big gauge teeth zips, so they, they're quite robust and hardy. Most of the bike bags use quite a big big zip. Um, you know, on a bike bag, you don't want to be wrangling with dicky little zips. So again, that's not a not an expensive thing to fix, and again, it will contribute to making the, the, the bike bag much more robust and long lasting. Getting into the bike bag is very, very easy. Like I said, two zippers, zip along the length of the bag. There are two sides and they come together like so. And like, as you can just see, that is so easy to get into. So uh, if you're going on, a, like say, flying into Adelaide for the Tour de Andor or from somewhere in Europe into Spain or France or Italy or wherever you're going and it's just a short trip, that makes it super, super easy. You can just get your bike in and out and set up very, very quickly uh, rather than having to put everything together. So that's a big plus in my opinion. Uh, just on that, you'll notice I've still got the pedals on. If I were travelling overseas, I'd take them off only because I have Shimano Alteras and they're quite a wide form factor. If you have speed plays or something like that, you could probably leave them on. Uh, I just don't want to expose my bike to the risk of, of lateral force onto the cranks. Uh, next up, we'll talk about padding. So, most of the padding is in the sides, and there's a bit in the top as well. The sides have, it's, it's about that thick, it's not super dense, it's adequate. Uh, the wheels go in these wheel compartments and they also help. Um, there's padding on the inside, and slight padding, the actual flaps have padding. They help protect the bike frame as well. I'd rather my wheels take a little bit of a knock than the actual bike frame. Uh, so that's good, they help brace the bike a little bit. Then, to protect the hoods and levers and the bars, we've got these removable yellow pads that velcro in, which is good. They're quite thick, uh, they're quite, sorry, thin, they're, they're medium density, so they're pretty good. They just sit across here. Uh, just on the bars, and this is this is speaking from experience. When I got back in 2009, I had an almighty knock to the top of the, the bike. Bars were bent, the whole, the hoods were, were knocked right around. Luckily, I hadn't done them up too tight. That's not a bike bag problem, that's a baggage handler problem, there's not much you can do about it, but a simple thing to pr help protect these, make sure these aren't too tight, so loosen them off a little bit, so especially if you've got SRAM and you get a side knock, these will spin around rather than snapping. Also loosen off these nuts on the front, rotate your bars down, so that the, the whole assembly here is, is down under here and it just reduces the exposure a little bit and to me it reduces the risk a little bit. Okay, let's talk about the adjustability of the bike oak. That's very important if you've, you know, if you've got uh, a quite an extra, you know, quite a big bike like an extra large, uh, that could be a problem in some other bike bags. So in that regard, this bike bag is really, really good. The front attaches to this metallic arm. There's supplied skewers for forward, um, for fore and aft. So basically, your forks just sit there. This arm slides in and out, sits inside a metal sleeve and it slides forward and backward. There's about 15 centimetres of room to move there, so that's heaps and heaps of room. One thing to be mindful of, uh, you'll notice there's about 10 centimetres of play there. Uh, that's enough, I've got an extra small frame, keep in mind. So I'll be sticking padding at the front just to protect the forks. If you've got a larger and extra large bike frame, you might find that your forks are coming right up against the front of the bike bag, which might preclude you from putting any padding. Pro teams use this bike bag, and there are a lot of guys who are much bigger than my 5 foot 7 getting around on large and extra large frames, so obviously it's, it's, it can be done, just something for you to be mindful of. Uh, if we talk about the back, uh, the stays sit on this, this metal sort of stand. It doesn't move, so that's a reference point. Um, one thing I do want to talk about and highlight is the rear derailleur. You can see my rear derailleur cable is flush up against the back of the bike bag. So if that were to get a knock, who knows what would happen. I didn't remove mine in 2009 when I took it. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second with the straps. But if I were you, uh, learn how to remove your rear derailleur, it's just an Allen key, quick job. Take it off, wrap it up in bubble wrap, stick it down there, then it's protected, you don't have to worry about it. And if you do that, 
There's a heap of room, given that this front, this middle arm doesn't doesn't move. There's a heap of room for you to put um, padding like a sheet, a towel, or bubble wrap, whatever, down the back of the bike to protect the rear of it. So, you know, in terms of fitting fitting in uh, the bike and padding, that it's good in that regard. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is securing the bike internally to the bike bag. Now, to me, this is very very important to make sure your bike bag's locked in with to make sure your bike's locked in nice and tight with the bike bag and it's not flapping around and banging around. I think that this bike bag fails in that regard. And let me show you why. <clears throat> Basically, when you have the two sides up, there are three straps across the top tube, across the front on the forks, and there's one on the back as well for the rear uh, stays. So basically, these straps can um, attach to the bike bag internally, uh, halfway up on the, on the wheel compartments. So that means that a lot of the force is laterally across the bike into the two sides rather than down. Uh, in 2009 when I got my bike home, I'd found that those, those, um, those straps had just come undone. The bike was just flapping around everywhere even though I'd done everything up tightly. Uh, to me, that's, that's completely unacceptable. Uh, I'm quite careful and, and fastidious in that regard, so I made sure everything was done up tightly. Craig's told me the same things happened to him. So a, a simple fix, I think, is just designing the bike bag so that the straps attach to the actual metal frame inside and then pull the bike down rather than the straps pulling across the bike bag. They, they pull down um, across the top tube and pull the bike down, which would help really uh, you know, facilitate better um, stability in terms of holding the bike down into the frame. Uh, and I'll, do that, I'll probably look at doing that at the front and the rear as well, or maybe they could stay inside, but inside uh, the, the 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 sides. But definitely, the main the main strap needs to be pulling down on the bike. Uh, next thing I want to talk about, and this is based on a lot of on mostly feedback Craig's given me, but also from some other people, is the internal material. Now, to me, uh, it, it's quite thin. No, it's not super thin, but it's it's quite thin. And I've heard that that tears, and you know, Craig told me his his bike bag's been overseas a few times and it's just basically shot to pieces inside. Zips are breaking. That's another issue. The other wheel compartment zips, but all his you know his sides are torn on the inside. That to me is not a big big um, issue. To, it's not a huge fix or a lot of work to fix it. You could use surfboard bag material, which is that foil silvery stuff. That's very very hardy and robust and takes a lot of knocks without breaking. So if that was used on the internal of this internals of this bike bag, that would contribute to making the bike bag much more robust and long lasting, which obviously is a big, big plus. All right, so that's pretty much everything. I've, I hope I haven't sounded too negative. I'll try not to. Uh, the guys from Cycon, if you're watching, hi. I hope I hope this um, doesn't disappoint you too much, and you take the feedback and the points I've made constructively. Uh, and you know, you can tell me to suck eggs, and or you can take and leave it. It's up to you. Uh, for those who are on the hunt for a bike bag, I hope that's helped you. Now, obviously, the things that are important to me might not be important to you, so watch the video and decide which things you, you think are most important to you. Uh, have a look at the photos I'll put in the post as well, and which will be close-ups of some of the things I've talked about. And, yeah, I hope this video has helped you in, a little bit, in, in some way in deciding which, which bike bag is going to be right for you. Thanks for watching. See you in another video soon.